most important way that people become infected with West Nile virus is through the bite of an infected mosquito. Most people, approximately 80%, who become infected with West Nile virus do not have any symptoms at all. Nearly 20% of those who become infected with West Nile virus develop a mild illness known as West Nile fever. The symptoms of West Nile fever can include fever, headache, body aches, nausea, vomiting, swollen lymph nodes, and sometimes a body rash. This illness is mild and goes away by itself without causing any long-term effects. There is no treatment for West Nile fever. A small number of people who become infected with West Nile virus, about 1 in 150, develop more severe illness, such as West Nile encephalitis, an inflammation of the brain, or meningitis, an inflammation of the membrane surrounding the brain and the spinal cord. The symptoms of severe disease include severe headache, high fever, neck stiffness, stupor, disorientation, coma, tremors, convulsions, muscle weakness, and paralysis. Approximately 10% of the people who develop severe illness have died due to their illness. Anyone can become infected with West Nile virus. However, people over the age of 50 are more likely than younger people to develop severe illness. After age 50, the risk of severe disease rises with increasing age. The majority of the fatal cases of West Nile disease in the large outbreak of 2002 occurred among people over the age of 50. While mosquito bites are the main method of transmission, people can also become infected with West Nile virus when they receive donated blood or transplanted organs from a person who was infected. CDC and other health authorities are working closely with blood banking organizations to reduce the risk of infection through blood products or organs in the future. If you have questions about this issue, you should discuss it with your health care provider. There is also evidence that West Nile virus could be passed from a pregnant woman to her baby. Because this was only one case, it is not possible to draw conclusions about this risk. Scientists are working to better understand the risk that West Nile virus poses to pregnant women and fetuses. In another case, it was found that breast milk could also contain West Nile virus. Though the baby was infected with the virus, there was no illness associated with the infection. CDC scientists will continue to monitor reports of West Nile virus infection in infants and children. The prevention recommendations for pregnant and breastfeeding women are the same as for other people. There is no specific treatment available for West Nile virus infection itself. This is the case with many viruses. If a person develops severe West Nile disease, encephalitis or meningitis, it is very likely that they will have to be hospitalized. In many cases, a person will need intensive supportive therapy, such as good nursing care, intravenous fluids, and respiratory support through a ventilator. Some people who develop severe West Nile virus infection will need additional treatment to help them recover, such as physical and occupational therapy over the long term. Approximately 50% of people who have experienced severe disease have not been able to recover fully. There is no West Nile virus vaccine for humans. The only vaccine currently available is for horses and other equine animals.